Okay, this is the third video. We are having quite a time with the sun coming around with the lighting, so I look like I'm a glowing orb. She looks like Moses' face. I don't know. We've tried multiple things, and we just can't get it right, so you're just going to have to bear with us. Um, Might be because we're <laughs> filming with a laptop, which have, has its own... We don't have a camera. What's funny, watch this. It'll change the lighting, I swear it will. How does it change the lighting of everything else? We we don't know. Anyway. We're not photographers, you know. We're just... Hacks. We just do what we can do with what we've got. We don't have a camera. We have a phone camera. We have my laptop camera. So we're just trying to... Like, what was that? I don't know. So <laughs> we, are, we apologize, but there's nothing we can change right now. Like, we've got... If you could see our little setup here, it's funny. <laughs> Our stage lighting is rather masterful with all these Victorian lights just set on the table. <laughs> with, and then my laptop is sitting on a chair, and we have natural light. On a table, we, <laughs> on a ladder, over the top of a the turtle, peak. On a turtle's back. <laughs> <laughs> with the atlas <laughs> holding up the globe. No, we've got two bigger windows. Like, if I opened those windows, it would be so bright. Like, we would both just be... Moses. We would just both be like glowing, but um, we apologize. So, we our just, next clip. We just had some information we wanted to share we wish, that we wish we would have known when we were going through. And not that we, there's no way I don't think we could have. Because there was really nobody out there telling this side of the story. There is now. Mm -hmm. Um and I'm glad there are people telling this side of the story that they are, will set you up and that they'll um, basically hunt you down for nothing. Mm -hmm. And they, that, they that information, situation. yeah, and that information wasn't out there, how they'll twist things. And now it is. Um, we've brought it. I know other people have brought it out too. Anyway, but, and good, because people need to be aware of this, but, I wanted to relate two instances from two different people in different parts of the country who uh, basically, if we'd have had this information, known they were headhunting, it could have stopped the headhunt. And I know we had a viewer bag on us earlier when we started doing our videos. Oh, they're just trying to keep people from getting disfellowship from witnesses, you know, because they view it as, you know, it's, well, they need to get out, out of witnesses. And that's fine and well and good, but they don't realize the gravity of, at least some of these people don't, of losing your entire family, for example, um, or your entire social structure, which may be more than just your social structure. It could include in your, in your, your economic structure as well, if you're working for a, or a brother or a whatever else, so, or working with a brother or sister. So We don't have a lot of witnesses in our family. Outside of to, us and our own personal uh, emotions, I guess it, it would be. Yeah, like I have an aunt and uncle who were, who are, were very close to me. But as far as like parents and siblings and, you know, all these family members and generations and social net, all this, we didn't have that. So it didn't hurt. It wasn't as painful. I and yet never they drug thought, it on. And I never thought. I've never been so tight with a witness as ever that I thought that they were, I mean, don't get me wrong, I've had friends that were witnesses, but like that they were such good friends of mine that I really needed to, you know, that it's going to be a, a big deal to lose that friendship. The people that were I was tight with in the first place still am. You know, mm -hmm. Because there was, the friendship that was real wasn't based on what witnesses do or don't. Uh, it's based on more biblical things, maybe, sometimes. Um, but they recognize how witnesses in the Bible don't exactly mesh up all the time. And so, these two scenarios yeah, get on illustrate with this, that. Yeah, so get on with the first one because it's pretty good. <laughs> yeah, so I don't. there's two of them. I don't know which one you're talking about. But these were related to us. And if we'd have known this and how we could have dealt with our situation differently... One, we'd have had, have know, had to have known first that they were headhunting us. And that idea uh, that's talked about in, uh, in the scriptures of laying a dragnet for your brothers, um, 
we didn't realize that applied to the congregation like it does, and it certainly does. But it's funny because we read that stuff as witnesses all the time, but most of them don't apply it to themselves as if they would be the ones doing it. But that's exactly the circumstance when you're looking at those scriptures. So anyway, you'd have to recognize that they're headhunting you and know that that's the case first and how they work. And second, you'd have had to be able to know the second part of it, which is how to cut that off. So realizing that you're headhunting you first is the first step. I want to say very, very quickly with that scenario is I know that we as people want to give other people, whether they're in the congregation or whatever, the benefit of the doubt. But I will say this, that that it is a culture where, yes, you should be suspicious of your parents, your siblings, your buddies at the hall. You should be suspicious of anybody and confiding in anybody could mean a death sentence for you because they will rat you out just as fast. And the scriptures as you talk tell about them. that. Yep. Just as fast as you tell them that information or confide in them. Or even your spouse, it says. Mm-hmm. Guard your yeah, from from the one lying in your bosom. It does say that. So yes, you have every right to be suspicious. You don't have to be um because they're weird suspicious about it. of you. Yeah, and you don't have to be like weird about it, like kind of keep it cool or whatever, but yes, you have every right to be suspicious of everyone. Because they are. They're headhunting you. So, and the, these two instances, I think, I wish I'd have known this because we could have cut that off at the pass. Again, we'd have had to know ahead of time that they were headhunting us. But, uh, and this only works if you're fading for the most part, because otherwise, for us, for example, we kept our mouths shut and they were just laid the trap over and over and over again to try to, to get something out of us, anything. But if you're fading, it becomes a whole lot easier because you're just not, they have to hunt you down. They have to track you down as opposed to you being in the congregation. So these two stories, one of them is, and I'm not relating who or what or how they came to me, us or anything, Just I, it's just specifically for the educational purposes of others that are out there who may be in this situation of potentially being headhunted or being questioned. And one of them, the person gets called by the elders and they tell the elders basically to get bent, I'm not going to meet with you. And so not so many words, probably kinder than that, but that they're not going to meet with them. Well, they tell them it's judicial, which before they didn't tell you it's judicial. And I know that people have said, oh, they will, you know, that some of the publications state to not say it's judicial, but that must have been changed because I know in our case, they told us it was judicial. They said, hey, we'd like to meet with you. And I said, okay, well, we're out of town. When we get back, just let us know when. And they said, well, it's judicial. (sighs) Whoa. Okay. That was a bomb dropper. Um, Because we were on the road at the time. I'm driving down the freeway, and I'm talking to this elder, and he, in the middle of traffic, city traffic. And I'm like, well, we're getting ready to go through traffic. Yeah, we'll meet you when we get back. You know, or we're in the middle of traffic. You know, we'll meet with you when, when we get back. Oh, well, it's judicial find time to drop that bomb. Anyway, this individual basically tells them to get bent. He's not going to meet with them. They say it's judicial. And he's like, even more so, I'm not meeting with you. You can just leave me alone. They call the individual back and tell them, well, we jumped the gun on that. It's not judicial, but we'd still like to meet with you. (laughs) Yeah, like that's going to happen. Wait a minute. How is it you go from being it's judicial to, oh, wait a minute, we jumped the gun on that. We got a little bit ahead of ourselves. We need some other checks and boxes before we can make this judicial. Well, then he's like, forget it. I'm definitely not going to meet with you now. So (laughs) they're not able to have the judicial situation. Uh, Are you kidding me? It's judicial. And then we have to backtrack on that. If that doesn't smack of legalism, I don't know what does. Oh, wait, we want to disfellowship you, but we don't got enough evidence yet. Would you meet with us so we can gather more evidence from you? 
That's basically, it's tantamount to what they were doing. Yep. And so he just told them, forget it. I'm not going to meet with you. Leave me alone. And I thought, that is a crazy situation. That's an insane. And then somebody else tells me, they, they meet with me, and to their credit, they're like, I really don't care if I get this fellowship. I mean, don't get me wrong. I don't want to lose the association with my family and whatever else. Um, but I'm not so concerned with you know, losing that association. So, And that's to their credit. They were ready to, as the scripture says, pick up your torture stake is what Jesus said. And, and this person has had time to sort of digest the idea it's it hasn't been yeah. sprung on them like so often is the case right and it's and it's like uh, it was in our case and you know like other cases yeah individuals it's you can either have a time to adjust to the idea of getting disfellowshipped and what's going on and how the congregation's acting and and what they're things that they're doing that aren't scriptural um because you can be disfellowshipped for, it's funny because brazen conduct, if you look up brazen in the dictionary, and it does match, I know the Jehovah Witness definitions, Jehovah's Witness definitions, definitions don't always match um, biblical, I mean, secular definitions, but in this case, it, it it's pretty well does. But a definition of brazen is, the lack of shame or the showing of confidence through an embarrassing situation or or the like. So in other words, if you put that in scriptural speak or in Jehovah's Witness speak, and I'm saying that either way, it's being showing confidence or not being ashamed when we are trying to shame you as witnesses, as elders, or you're, scripturally speaking, not being ashamed at something you should be ashamed of, scripturally speaking. So let's say I cheat on my wife, for example, and I'm like, well, that's just what I'm going to do. and I'm going to do whatever I'm going to do. That would be a brazen conduct or a brazen attitude. I'm, I'm proud of what I did. What I did. Or I'm not ashamed of what I did. I've got an air of confidence about me, even though what I did was, was wrong. Um, so that would be a brazen conduct as far as the scriptures are concerned. But that can be twisted as so many things. They twist so many scriptural ideas that would be uh, good in the statement to something that is not in the sense of they just apply it to whatever they say. So now brazen becomes an elder tells you that you should be a, you shouldn't be wearing those shoes on stage. And that, by the way, that's real counsel that I've gotten. And uh, mm -hmm. if the individual, and I'd like, okay, fine, I'll change my shoes, even though the elder's pet buddy that they moved in the congregation wears those exact same shoes and nobody says anything to him. Anyway, I just, fine, I'll change my shoes. But if I would have said, I'm not going to, I'll wear whatever shoes I want, buddy. That could be brazen conduct. Nothing to do with the scriptures. It's just the and elder's what, authority. Yep. Because what you're doing is you're chafing at their authority. Yeah. You're, 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 you're doing whatever they're saying against their authority. It reminds me of uh, um, when in our, in our uh, judicial committee meeting in the, in the uh, appeal. The appeal meeting. Yep. The, appeal meeting. the conductor says, uh, of about the faithful slave issue. He says, well, didn't you know that was a hot, didn't you see that, or didn't you know, or didn't you see that that's a hot button topic? However, he introed it, but, the, but it's a hot button topic. And I'm like, no more of a hot button topic than anything else they want to bring up, whether it's seat belts or what shoes or whether or not my hair's cut the right way or, or whatever else they want to bring up my suits. Correct. I mean, name it. Whatever it is that they've brought up on the docket that day is a hot button topic to them and of can course. be brazen conduct if you don't accept whatever counsel that they want to give you at that moment. Mm -hmm. So uh, anyway, that could be brazen conduct, but it's twisted and it ends up being Pharisaic. For example, that's exactly what they pulled on Jesus Christ. Who are you to be counseling us? We're God's organization. You're yet 30 years old, not even 30 years old. And this, this, we've been doing this for hundreds of years, buddy. Who do you think you are? 
you need to accept our authority. And, and so then what Jesus did to them in not accepting that authority and having confidence about it, about his father's backing, to them that would have been brazen conduct. And the, the apostle of uh, Paul, or no, who wrote Hebrews? Wasn't it Paul? Yeah. Whoever wrote Hebrews, um, it says that Jesus Christ despised shame. He picked up his torture stick and he despising shame because he had the, the greater reward at the end there um, of sitting down at his father's right hand. So he despised that shame. That would be brazen conduct. Despising the shame that you're heaping upon me. I am not going to accept that shame. And likewise with us, we did not accept the shame that the wait a minute, you think that asking a question is shameful conduct? No, I despise that shame. Mm -hmm. that's, that's not righteous of you to say that. So, uh, anyway. So, back to this second situation. The elders call this person up, and they say, well, we'd like to meet with you. And they say, no thanks, I'm doing fine, there's no reason for me to meet with you. And they say back, well, I don't think you understand. We want to meet with you. And they're like, Oh, I understand. <laughs> <laughs> I understand. I'm just not going to meet with you. And they're being nice about it. And the elders again say, No, I, I don't think you understand. We need to meet with you. And again, this individual responds and said, Oh, I absolutely understand what you're saying. But this head hunt is over. This or this witch hunt is over. I think they actually said, told me they used that verbiage. This witch hunt is over. So it's like, oh, I understand, but I'm not going to meet with you. This witch hunt is over. So I wish we'd have been that wise or had that much information. And What's funny is they then tried to make it a legality issue, and they'll always do this because they've got certain checks and boxes they have to have. Now with us, because we weren't necessarily fading away, we were still very active pioneering in the congregation. I don't know how much of that we could have used. We'd have had to change strategy totally there. But I remember at one point in time, in fact, I'd said, what, do we got to move? And one of the elders that was kind of, I would say, leaned toward our side a little bit more. He said, uh, which they don't let you in on because they're very political in that way, because if they let you know, it's like, it's like leaning to the left. If you're a, a Democrat, you want to lean to the left as far as you can, but not totally show that you're leaning left. And the same with the Republican. They want to pander to as far to the right as they can, but uh, really actually be a little more middling because they want to please as much of the left as they can too. There's so much politicking that goes on as a witness. So if you're an elder, you want to kind of let the people know you're with them a little bit, but you don't want to get too far out of line of what the authorities are saying or what's up, because if you do, you'll get your head chopped off too. You know, so it's the... Uh, so much politicking, it's disgusting. Um, anyways, he, 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 when I mentioned, what, do we got to change congregations? He says, well, I wouldn't blame you if you did. That was almost like you should. You should do that because it was funny in that whole situation. I was trying to show that, no, you deal with the situation by doing as the scriptures say. Go to your brother. And that was a situation that I had counseled another brother because he changed congregations. Well, in the Watchtower, they tell you not to change congregations because of, a, because of an issue, but to continue to go to your brother. Well, if you do continue to go to your brother and they're elders, they'll chop off your head. That's all there is to it. And the ones who told you not to change congregations will support them in chopping off your head. So... The hypocrisy is so disgusting when you think about what oh what's God. written in literature and then what... The elders say, "Will they, they? You know, they want to try to stay with what the literature says as much as they can, but yet they still have this oral, oral tradition. Oral tradition. I mean, it's so Pharisaic. It's so obvious how Pharisaic it is. Where they'll have written, you know, there is the Bible, 
But we've got these written scrolls that we've got. We've got this written, what do they call the Talmud? Yep. And then we've got, what's the oral tradition? It's the Talmud as well, but it's just the oral tradition part of it, yep. But but it's like it conflicts one another, and yep. it, it just doesn't make sense, and it's that's why it's so frustrating for people it's to be in that politicking. organization. It's horrid. Politicking. It's politicking. It's horrible politicking. And nobody anyway. benefits. That's the thing. No, well... I would say nobody. Well, they benefit because the they get to does. they get to rule over someone else. Yeah. The bullies get to feel more powerful. No. Yep. But anyway, if we'd have known that, you could just basically tell them to get bent. We'd have had to change our whole strategy. But if you're trying to fade away and you really haven't said much to you, they really can't gain information unless you talk to people. So, and again, they need two admonitions. And this elder in the second situation tried to get get to the point to where it's legal. So the official state your official statement is that you're not going to meet with us. So now they start turning it into an official statement or an official in other words, what would you really like me to write down in your file? <laughs> you know, and it's 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 so ridiculous that it comes down to that type of legalism. Yeah. It's just crazy. Leave me alone. <laughs> And that was basically uh, this individual statement, leave me, leave my family alone. And so far that worked. So if you're having that situation and you're fading away and you start getting headhunted a little bit, you can flat out tell them, leave me alone. Leave me alone. Don't call me. Don't talk to me. And there's probably not too much they can do as long as you're not out talking to other people. Or whatever yeah. else. If you really do live by that, which is funny because we I was given this advice from somebody. Again, I'm not going to divulge who that is either. Um, but they quoted that scripture to live quietly and mind your own business. Just stay under the radar. Don't make waves. You know, just go go to the meetings if you feel like going to the meetings. Or don't go to the meetings. But don't make yourself a spectacle. Just which, by the Just way, is a away. total misapplication of that scripture. Because but that, that was the yeah. application of it. To apply that business. to inside the congregation is not at all what that scripture was talking about. Make it your aim to live quietly and mind your own business. Paul was talking about those on the outside, not make waves. And everything. But when you have to apply that to the congregation, wow, that's that's disgusting. Oh, I kind of, but linking that back, and if you're going to create a sister scripture with that to use with that, would have when Jesus, and I think you quoted it before, where he, Jesus said, leave them alone. Oh, yeah. Those he was Pharisees. talking about the Pharisees. Just let them be. Let them alone, yeah. Let them alone. Yep. Let them do what they do. But we thought that was just very interesting as far as yeah. what to, to bring somebody, tell them it's a judicial meeting, and then have to recant that. Oh, how embarrassing. That's just crazy. Just crazy. And then being able to just tell them, hey, get bent. I'm not meeting with you. Get bent. Anyway, that's what we had to share. On to the next stage of our uh, restoration project. Isn't that cute? So cute. <laughs> I wish they would like move. <laughs> what are you doing, Dubkins? Isn't that cute? Should I walk up to him? They'll probably just move. No, go ahead and walk up to him with the camera on. Guys. Those babies. Oh. <laughs> they look like young, aren't don't they? Yeah, they look They're like small. They, if they came out of a nest. Where would the nest be though? <coughs> that is so cute though. I wonder if they nested up there. You know the robins leave and that nest is free. Just right. 
Oh, they're definitely young. There you go, guys. <laughs> oh, look at this. Look at this. <laughs> I was able to walk past them and then they moved right above my window or my door I mean they're right here isn't that the cutest thing they just siblings I guess sitting together so cute <laughs> I love that so I'm just sitting here in the vestibule and uh, those two little doves I'm just content as ever to be sitting there in the tree watching me. I'm just sitting here drinking a beer in their presence. Aren't they cute? I make a little cactus beer. It's my favorite. It's my favorite. They look like lovebirds. Yeah, they're cute little buggers. They're doves, though, aren't they? Yep. Yeah. But they're young. Yep, I think they're young. I think they're siblings. Well, I'm pretty sure they're... Hmm? Pretty sure they're not mom and pop. No. Okay, here's another update. I don't know what Chad has said, but last night we decided we needed to move all these bricks because I got to being too close to this pile. There was all these, everywhere where there's like dead grass, there was pallets of bricks and we had to get our forklift running to move them all. But we decided we were gonna just be edge all of our flower beds here, all the bricks. I'll show you around. We just snaked it around the house and it's just such a mess when you're doing a project like this. Um, and then we're doing the other side too. It got too hot up here so we decided to go in the backyard. But um, this side is pressure wash. I don't know if Chad had mentioned this. This side's done. This side is done. He's been fixing just miscellaneous pieces of boards that need to be replaced. But I'll go back there and show you what we're doing with all the bricks. We've got so many, too many. We've got an old stove, like an old Franklin style wood stove. We're gonna put right there as like a burn pit? I don't know. Not a burn pit, but like a sit around campfire type style thing. We're going to put it right there, but all that landing section has to be refigured because it's not centered. Um, so I have to hand move all these bricks that are on this concrete. These are on broken pallets, which I think we could probably get up with a forklift. But these all have to be moved. What else has been in our up? What's what else is there an update on besides the bricks? We're power washing. I yeah. I guess I could show you the house real quick too. That's as far as I've gotten on this side, just as high as I can get on the ground, and then um, Chad will get the ladder, you know, and do the rest. Thankfully, there's a nice big window on this side, so it should go quicker. And then the back of the house, it shouldn't be too bad either. The last person that painted this, I think replaced boards, just in some weak zones it looked like to me, like here. But the paint comes off super easy on those. <clears throat> and same with right here. A lot of these boards have been replaced and it just comes off so easy. Like this whole section. From like the window, this whole square has been replaced with new boards. But this is all original siding. Look way up there. Thankfully.
basically all most of the white section is pretty good still so there's not a lot of coming off so that means it's stuck on there which is good but other than that I don't have much to hide a swiffer we've been letting her out here running around you want to say hi to monster <laughs> she's been playing out here with us hi pretty girl hi pretty girl so we finished the bricks around the other side haven't done a video for a few days and wrapped them to the other door from the front door and built it up to a couple layers there we also had enough to go around a couple layers around these lilacs and then we also got a wild hair to go down and grab this wrought iron fencing and put up so I've been working on that. I have to notch every one of these out just so it's even. And then what I'm doing is just bolting them together. But it's got these nice little rounded pieces as you go into an entryway. So that's what I mean by notching them out. And then we're bolting them together. They used to have some sort of a setup like that. But that hardware is all gone, and quite honestly, that puts a rod in between the loops every seven feet, which to me doesn't look as good as just leaving it like that. And then there's just a slightly wider gap. I suppose I could have re-drilled and cut off and whatever to make the difference, but I just don't care that much, I guess. But we bolt them together and round it on the other side and it'll run back to these bricks over here and we finished off these as well bumped it up a couple layers there and here to use off basically the rest of the bricks into this style and then I gotta finish making the fire pit Tiffany's still power washing, but that got all the bricks off of that garage wall so we could power wash that. I still have to move these ones. These go over to the other house, to our house. But she's power washing the backside. And then I'll get up there and power wash probably tomorrow after she's done with this side over here. And then I'll finish by doing the top sections. Tomorrow's supposed to be 90, so that'll be a great day to do it. But it's coming together. It's coming together. Starting to round the apex. Had a bird this morning in our house just inside the door oh he's coming back he stunned himself he hit himself really hard against the window oh there he goes finally we got to stage paint stage it's like 8 8 30 i think at night we worked almost till dark just uh, cleaned the machine we ran out of paint we used seven gallons so far and we've done three sides so we've done this this was just brushed on like remnants of what the machine couldn't pick up out of the buckets and then we did the back and then we did this side on the upper section um chad sprayed you have paint all over your beard by the way like a big glob of it really like right here on the side huh. <laughs> but he's, oh yeah that should be like be like a wax he's like you can't really see it on the screen, but he's so speckled and um, speckled and spotty cutter. Or I striped? think, yeah, I think we are having to go get seven more gallons because we have to do the turrets. Like all the trim around the turrets is mostly this color. It's called discreet. Too bad I didn't get a blue that was called slave, but I didn't. It was Faithful. called. Faithful slave. And discreet. There's a ladder right there. <laughs> um, but the blue we picked is called silver blue pearl. 
We'll show that when we start doing some more blue. It's very similar to what was here all before. And I just started getting stuffed up again because it's getting later in the day and humidity humidity is worse and they've been harvesting. <laughs> oh yeah, the fence. Did we talk about the fence yet? I don't know if I did. I think I talked a little bit about, a little bit about it. Little bit about it. Just a simple roll on. I was look, thinking about what am I going to do for a gate. I couldn't figure it out. I was thinking of making a latch and whatever else. And I thought, I'm going to do something totally stupid simple. All you do is just roll it on. Works. Welded two little nibs on there. It seems to hold pretty good. And when you want in, all you do is push. Push it open, yeah. But we've come so far. I'm excited to be done. I don't know. It seems like I just keep saying another week, another two weeks. And that goes by and then this was just a huge project to take on but we have our reasons why we're doing this so I guess it's time to eat dinner and take a shower and do it tomorrow <laughs> so we were on our way to pick up another Model T and get some paint to finish that house and uh, Lo and behold, we push in the clutch, and there we go again. We did the same thing last and time. And I'm freewheeling, and once again, we've got a clutch that spun the center out of it. What in the heck? It's bad. And it broke that right off. Like I was saying, it's on the it's on the sections that are split. Yep. You know, like maybe it got split. Oh, maybe it, look at this. It's supposed to be tight right here. See that, how it, it's totally split apart? You think that that's a... Uh, I think that's supposed to become oh, together. So we're not missing any. We're not missing any I thought any we were plates. missing a, a, a whatever, but we're not missing a plate. You're right. I think maybe it just, like you said, it, it just, just spread it, out. I think it splits right here. Oh, so here you got this fancy schmancy clutch, and you got this split, and then all yeah. it has to do is break this little one-inch section. Yep, and that's exactly what it did. It split right there. Yep. It it gets a it gets a stress a stress fracture in there. What I was bet. it hitting to where it did that? No idea. No idea. Because it did it here too. Yep. Maybe it was just because just the, the frat. I mean, this. I. I mean, it could have been anything. It could have just broke that one little section. But I mean, there's these metal pieces in here, and then it broke that throw up bearing apart. Well, the throw up bearing probably broke first, and then I'd say it did something it to the clutch. But, that could be. Because the throw up bearing always goes first, and then it ruins everything else. Plastic crap. Plastic. Somebody needs to come up with metal parts. So just get your was. milling machine out. And stinking make this whole thing out of metal so all this freaking metal crap doesn't come undone. Well, I'm glad I'm glad this happened empty. The trailer was empty and that we were only about a half an hour away from home. I had to call a friend. Uh, so we weren't across country at least, you know. Can you imagine if that happened when we were in Chicago just not too long ago? Yeah, that would have been no fun. But we had a good conversation with him. He's a... Uh, <laughs> Our friend, yeah. He's uh, associated with witnesses, so. So he knows the inner ins and outs and inner workings somewhat. And they can't DF him because <laughs> not baptized. he's not baptized, so. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not trying to get anybody else in any trouble or nothing, but. Yeah, here's another piece that's jammed in the Yeah, isn't spring. that messed up? That is just messed up. But we've got the old clutch that I pulled out of it when the throw-out bearing went last time. This one's fine, but like and I said... And the clutch is fine. It doesn't seem to have any stress fractures in here. That's where it would be, though. Yep, and it's nothing that seems fine. So I ordered another throw-out bearing because I knew that was going to be a problem no matter what. It'll be here in the morning. And we'll just throw all this crap right back in it and down the road. Dang it. I just hate it, pulling that stupid transmission out because it's a nightmare to get back in. It's so heavy. It's so heavy. And it's so big. All right. That's it. We've got clutches that go out. Okay, so I bought 
this clutch, these two of these, uh, last time when this one went out. This and is the original You wonder, one. Why, I, why do I save all this old crap? Well, this is why I save all this old crap. So that way I can bring it out and look at it and go, okay, so what happened to this one last time that's any different than that one? And... This one was has a good solid plate around the outside. But these things are But strong. the inside part that ties it is just like this thin little aluminum. Yeah, <laughs> little tin. I mean aluminum it, foil. And this one's a thicker plate, which is all well and good. Just like still, this is the thick right. plate. But then they've only got but one inch flex. tying it. Then they flex. Well, that you know that flexing isn't that bad of a deal. That's not any big deal. But Unless why, you get a stress fracture. Why would you yeah. have one little inch there of material to? If this was all welded or all solid. Mm -hmm. And it's late, so I'm pissed off. And I've got one more clutch again. That this one was the when the throwout bearing went out last time last year, and it was just the throwout bearing, and I pulled this clutch out. This was right before our trip to Florida. You could probably see that. And it was just, there's no stress fractures at all in no. it. So I can't, it's not like, okay, I think my flywheel's off center and so it's wiggling back and forth and, and then causes a problem. I think it's these stupid things right here. They go out and then they cause all sorts of freaking problems. That's what I would think anyways. But... You know what? I don't understand why. So it, bur so it broke all the metal off the back. Okay, what's the big deal? This. Because this slides in here. This goes this way on the transmission. And this just sits in here on this groove. Uh, this way. Like so. In that yoke. That's not a yoke, but yeah. Well, that's in that groove. Like. And I don't... It doesn't seem like it. It doesn't seem like it. It just sits in there, and it's usually, you know, it's kind of clamps in there a little bit. But why wouldn't that engage, unless you know, just a piece of whatever came undone and then got jammed in there and created a problem? I've got no idea. I've Isn't that no messed idea. up though? God dang. I'm glad you brought out that that just spread apart because I was thinking we were missing a <clears throat> I thought we were at tooth. first too, but then I started calculating this and it's like, well, then we would have a bigger chunk. No, that doesn't make no sense. This is actually supposed to be pushed back together. Like you can see where the line is supposed to go no. in together. Well, doesn't that so just So you're going to find another one of these and buy it and we're going to leave it in the truck. So that way when we are cross country in some... <sighs> BS happens like this. We can fix it on the road. This is yeah, hard. we dropped this and how much time did it take us? <clears throat> well, it took us longer because we bolted it back up thinking it was something else, but I think we could get it down in an hour. Yeah. Now, getting it back together. As long as we got both our jacks that are working, that's yeah. the other thing. Getting it back together might be another. The sun is so bright. We're trying to drive south instead of east and right into it. Um, we are right up. We are up bright and early. I think it's what, 8 o'clock, 7 o'clock? We usually don't get up too early, but... Um, finally, we're on the road after that transmission problem. And we got our transmission, our clutch back in, our pilot bearing back in. All, the, all of it put back together. Right? Everything was bad. Clutch, pilot bearing, throw out bearing. I can't really see you because the sun is right there in your eye. Like That's it's right perfect. there. Look at, no, I'm <laughs> Look at me. Look at me glowing. No, but we we, we petted out. We, we needed paint to finish this job, and we found another Model T to pick up. And so we we're like going to kill two birds with one stone. Go we'll pick up this Model T, and we didn't get 20 miles out of town, and 30 miles out of town, and had no 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 transmission. It was done. Gone. And it was gone. Uh, I think we have a little clip of it we can put in here. So now we're back to it again. She wants to play so bad and the truck is just not the right place to be playing. She really gets her horn and wiggles out by me chasing her around. <laughs> I can't exactly chase her around in the truck. Sorry, harvest is in full force and I've got allergies in full force. So. Picking up.
another little Model T. This one almost looks like a little fire truck. Cute. It's a 24, 1924. I need to pull my ramps down. Hopefully I can do this, help him. Those things are like four wheelers though, I mean, is that, yeah, that's parked. Yep. Like it's not a neutral, it won't roll. No. You want to video around here at oh, all? Go ahead. No, you do it because you know what to say. Well, not much to say, 1924 Model T. Uh, was a dealership vehicle originally that was uh, from Wabin, I think he said? Yeah. And, uh, it came back, I don't know if there, it was wrecked or something, but it ended up in a back room of a dealership where it spent a, a good part of its life. And then eventually the dealership closed down in the 50s and it went to another guy and it sort of just sat in a barn, got covered up and whatever else. And then uh, this guy's dad bought it and he, uh, I don't know if the was when it was wrecked it ru ruined the norm the body that was on it or if it never made it that far or whatever but they built this wood box on it for kind of a pickup box and quite honestly it'd be kind of a cute little uh huckster if he turned it into that but it's got a texas timer on it which means that it runs off the like a distributor instead of the coils and then they hooked up an electric fan so they can use it in parades. And... I think it's super cute. Yeah, it's a cute little vehicle. I like how the seat is all refinished in that, like, vinyl, whatever. But the red color is classy. Yep. You know, it's not John Deere green or something <laughs> like that. Yep, very neat.